world title, then of course it, it's difficult to, to ex accept defeat. The great silver lining is that the bloke who beats you almost immediately says, I'm out of here, I've retired. I retire and the title's now vacant. So to suddenly go from that losing position into, into being in a, in, a, in a title fight again, that, that must be extraordinary. Yes, and it's the, the, what it is, it's like somebody throwing you a lifeline. Um, you, you, in your own mind, you, you're accepted that you've had three cracks at a world title and, and they've gone. Uh, and, and being a winner, which Howard was, let's make no bones about it, he was a winner. And I think that 99% uh, of people who were ever friends with him or ever involved with him in the boxing game or in his personal life, he was, he was a born winner. And to be thrown a lifeline for a, a fourth attempt, well, that was something special. Yeah. I mean, Mr. Nori Seki had been around. He'd been the number two contender or the, so maybe the number one contender. So it was, it was an obvious matchup. Winston Seki. Yes. I mean, they say obviously Seki was the best of the bunch that was around that fell into the category of fighting for a vacant world title. And um, I think that, uh, without a doubt, Seki's style suited Howard, suited him down to the ground. Howard would have been in there after 25 rounds with Seki, and I think you'd have had the same result, whatever would have happened. Right now, right. Right. There's no doubt who's the master inside, it's Winston. He's consistently been better inside all the way through this fight. He ties up Seki beautifully inside and frequently scores. And for a moment, I thought Seki had trouble with his right eye. He has got trouble with his right eye. He brushed away the blood. And Seki now is cut on the right eye. Roland Dakin's going to have a look at that right eye. He's having a good close look at it. It's right up underneath the eyebrow. And he's going to stop it, I think. I think Roland Dakin's going to stop it. He's asking the corner to look at it. And the Welsh have taken it for granted. And it's over and it is over. It's over in the ninth round. And Seki, moments after he was cut, has been stopped. And Winston is champion of the world at last and is the first Welsh world champion for 45 years and you won't stop the Welsh invading this ring now. What was that is controversy though the cut was deemed um, well not deep enough to have really troubled Seki but the, 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 the referee did stop it do you think that tainted it or did anybody notice even? Um, well I, I wouldn't imagine that um, that Howard and uh, and the camp would have, would have mourned too much about it, but uh, but at the end of the day, it was a cut. It was the referee's decision. We all take it on the chin when it goes against you. It's nice to have a bit of the rub of the green, as they say, and uh, it was Howard's night, uh, and 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 here we are talking about it. And it was, uh, uh, I think, something that was fair, fair in boxing. Boxing can be rough. Boxing can be cruel, if you like. But that night. I think it was payback time, and uh, and Howard rightly so came away with the with the world title. There was a bit of controversy about the, the, the way that the fight was stopped at the end because a lot of people said that he didn't have much of a cut. Did you go over and have a look at Tegi? Um, it was a bad cut. It was a bad cut. How do you feel about winning the championship on on a stopped fight? Oh, I don't care. I won it as long as I win it, I'm happy. Do you think it changed anything in the, in the town here when Howard Winston came home this time as, as world champion? Do you, think, do you think it altered boxing, Howard, the town? Yes, without a doubt. I mean, to say, uh, number one, it put uh, Merthyr Tidwell on the map. Um, Eddie Thomas had done it prior to him um, with his British Commonwealth and European titles. And we had Howard coming along, top capping it all by winning the same same titles and, and adding a world title to it. It put Merthyr on the world stage of boxing and uh, that was no mean feat by, by anybody's judgment. It was preordained that, that he'd fight uh, José Legra. Um, do you think, uh, do you, I suppose it would have been lovely if he'd gone on for 
four years, five years, because he retired young, didn't he? But one fight and that was it, all over. Yes, and let's make no bones about it, uh, Jose, like that, number one contender for the title. And, you know, Pongo Pong was probably one of the most feared fighters in the world at that time. I think if it was down to choice of uh, Eddie Thomas making that match, it wouldn't have come about. But uh, uh, him having the number one status, and I think that it was forced upon them. And these two have met before. They met three years ago in a non-title fight in Blackpool. And Winston won it on points over ten rounds, but he was given a very hard fight by Legra. And Legra, we think, has improved since those days. That's a good right hand, and he's hurt Winston with less than a minute of the world fight. Less than a minute of this title defense gone. And that's what happened to Winston a few, mo a few months ago against Jimmy Anderson. Anderson put him down, and Winston is in, he's in real trouble now, Winston. And he's over for the second time. I remember that fight in, against Legra, and uh, uh, the, only because the atmosphere it wasn't silence, but it was, it was quite spooky, wasn't it? Yes, and I mean to say, um, you know, talking from my own experience of being stopped, uh, somewhat humiliated, really, I think in the back of your mind, you realize